Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE from San Francisco. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. You know, here, here with day two of three of wall to wall coverage from Oracle Open World 2015. Uh, so much going on, 55,000 people at the show, uh, and said, you know, Oracle Open World really takes over the city. They close off streets, they take over hotels, the Java world's going off at, at the Hilton, Moscone, north, south, west, lots of hotels here. Uh, joining me for this opening segment of day two is Jim McHugh, who's the VP of UCS Product and Solutions Marketing with Cisco. Jim, welcome back to the program. Good to be with you again. All right, so, so Jim, yesterday we were talking about cloud. Yes. And of course, cloud's a big theme at the show, security uh, is going on. This morning in the keynote, there are a couple of key themes. First of all, celebration. The Golden State Warriors, I have to tell you, uh, I, I came uh, uh, about a month ago when I came for VMworld. I saw Golden State Warrior shirts everywhere. And I've been to San Francisco a bunch, I don't think I'd ever seen a Golden State Warrior shirt. Uh, secondly, uh, they were talking about a lot of the emerging technologies. Uh, WePro is on stage talking about half an hour, uh, talking about how, uh, you know, Internet of Things and those kind of uh, technologies going. And then uh, the third one is, is really kind of the, the rest of these emerging emerging technologies, so yeah. talking about Hadoop uh, as an application, talking about you know, Docker and DevOps and you know, all of these new pieces. So you know, as you look out, you know, Cisco obviously has a strong presence in the data center, you know, lots of uh, you know, virtualization and the like. You know, what, what does this emerging tech mean to you? What are some of the key areas that you guys are focused out I mean, looking at the future? I, was, it was, I thought it was really interesting that they brought that up because that is what ITs are dealing with right now. You got, you got the world of Oracle, the typical ER app, ERP apps running your business, and then you got all this new stuff, right? So there's the bimodal type aspects of it. At Cisco, obviously we spend a lot of time looking at IoT because 85% of the world's data touches Cisco infrastructure at one point or another. And we believe 40% of the data going forward is going to be created at the edge. It's not going to be in the data center. In fact, a lot of data doesn't even need to get into a database. You're going to be able to analyze data, make decisions before it even has the opportunity to get to a database. Yeah, I think back a few years back, we had so much discussion of kind of unstructured data. You yes. know, massive files and objects and what was going on there, and, it, and it's even more dispersed today. That we is. kind of talk about the, the future, the line I used uh, is, uh, the future is distributed and it's kind of here. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, many people are still trying to get their arms around IoT. I know Cisco's also called it IOE, the Internet yeah. of Everything. Um, how real is it, you know, how, what percentage of your customers are kind of talking and understanding it, and uh, you know, what, what is, what does Cisco deliver uh, yeah. in that? Obviously connectivity, but what else? Actually, um, you know, Cisco actually does focus a lot on IoT. When we say IOE, we're talking about taking the things and add people, process, and, and data to that. But the reality is, I mean, Cisco is, leads the IoT World Forum. It's in Dubai later this year. Um, put a lot of effort in that. We actually are looking at it from many different standpoints. I mean, what's going on in cars? What's going on in manufacturing? Where you can actually have the, the robot communicates via you know, our network that it's going to go down. And then, because you actually have the system that says, here's where the parts are, here's where actually the closest guy in the world is can actually install or train you on that, you can actually decide whether to pull that robot off or order the part and get it fixed. So things like that are just radically changing everything going on. Um, in the world of oil, right? So you can actually determine whether that dr drill bit is going to go off and whether it's shut down before it happens. You can do so many things. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time talking about what's going on in sports. You know, the Tour de France, it's really cool what's going on with Dimension Data. We're actually going to put sensors on each of the bikes next year. So you'll be able to know where that rider is no matter what's part of the thing. It's, it's changing, you pick an industry, Internet of Things and Data at the Edge is going to change it. Yeah, that, that, that's fascinating. Wikibon did some of the original research on what was called the industrial internet, with yep. GE's pushing forward, GE's doing lots of commercials on TV, and we said, you know, it's over a trillion dollar opportunity here. It's, you know, some of the low hanging fruit, of course, in healthcare, but as you said, these centers are everywhere. I uh, love watching sports. Uh, the NFL is trying out what yep. they're doing. Uh, Cisco, of course, does all the connected stadiums. Yep. I'm, I'm sure there's huge opportunities there that you guys huge are looking into. Yeah, it's going to, I mean, it won't be that far fetched that four years from now, when you're in the stadium and you're going to decide whether to go get a beer or a hot dog, you'll be able to look at your mobile phone and know where the long, long lines are and where the short lines are. That's just coming. 
because the MAC address is constantly communicating. We're putting Wi-Fi in stadiums right and left. And everyone used to think Wi-Fi, that was just like, you know, check your Facebook, do all that kind of stuff. Wi-Fi is now a sensor. It is acting as a sensor, and your MAC address is constantly communicating clusters of people and activity, and it's just going to change the way we act. Yeah, I, I need my Stadium Waze app so that it says, oh, Stu, not only the line, but I want to optimize for what kind of beer you want. Exactly. So, you know, uh, I'm okay waiting a little bit longer line if it's the premium beer that uh, I'm a bit of a beer snob. Yeah, so, uh, yeah me too. And, like and get the right food. So, uh, the other thing uh, we had on a couple of the interviews yesterday, talked about people that look at containers, uh, they look at the, the DevOps world, really, you know, automation and what's happening there. That infrastructure becomes any less important. It's yeah. that I need to make sure the integrations there, that the right knowledge people get things done to simplify that environment. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that space? Well, so you know, as DevOps grows important and the developers more important, you know, infrastructure needs to be more reliable. Because basically, what it's saying is, the the developer doesn't want to mess around and wait for you to make sure you figured out how to integrate the infrastructure and get everything to work together. So it becomes more important, and that's why some of the guests you'll be having on here today, what we're doing with. IBM, what we're doing with Nimble, you know, some of the things when Intel comes in, talks about how the collaboration we're doing on infrastructure together. That becomes more important, but it's not in the foreground of the conversation anymore. It just required, needs to happen. I mean, we're sitting here, Sandus has mentioned Cisco four or five times in their presentation as we're, we're sitting here. It's just because the reliability needs to be there. Then, then let's focus on the needs of developer. Let's focus on what DevOps really means. And I actually think a lot of people are still figuring that out. They, they, you know, the idea that we're giving the developer an area, a way of developing just in time, you know, get rid of the old waterfall approach to developing products, that's, that's all here and live. But people are still figuring out how to give them what they need to get it more productive. Yeah, so uh, Jim, the Cube goes to a lot of shows, and Oracle, it's a big one, and it's an interesting ecosystem. You walk around the show floor, and there's such, you know, so many places that Oracle's applications touch, that there's people that you're like, well, why are they here, and how do they partner? Can you tell me, what, what's your thoughts on kind of the state of Oracle's ecosystem, and give us a little insight as to some of the things we're going to dig into uh, here, here, here this week on the Cube. Oracle, and I think Larry and Mark Hurd made it very clear, you know, despite what's going on cloud, despite all this new components going on, the number of customers that run Oracle databases and apps is just huge. I mean, Cisco's one of the largest Oracle customers in the world. And we run our business on it, and everything drives from that. So if you think about, we're going through big changes. We're becoming a digital company. We're going for new ways of doing it. But our back end, we're running on Oracle. And by the way, running on UCS, so we get the best performance out of it as well. All right, do you see any changes happening? I mean, Oracle talks about you know, building all the way down to the silicon through the application. That red stack, uh, still a vibrant ecosystem in your mind, though? You know, I think Oracle has its strengths. Um, you know, obviously, as vendors push out those strengths to the edge, there's other people coming. I mean, I think, I think the stats are out there. You know, only 30% of Oracle runs on Oracle. Most of it runs on, on people like Cisco and other companies. All right, well, Jim, thanks for helping kick off day two here with three days uh, from the Expo Hall Moscone South here in San Francisco. I'm Stu Miniman. I'll be here all day and tomorrow. Uh, stop on by. It's booth 801 and uh, continue watching on SiliconANGLE TV. We'll be right back with our next guest. Thanks for watching.